Hey everybody, I'm Psychosaurus and today, well, there's been some changes in June, not that much, but we got some big rework here, but let's go through the June changes first. Okay, let's get it started. So we got from June the 5th, and let's see, so bug changes, nothing, spoiler changes, nothing. Bug fixes, fixed an issue where gear with maximum range increase as part of the stats wouldn't affect Norse fortresses after researching the burning feature pit. This one I'm gonna explain because I was one that actually reported this and it felt really annoying because for some reason Norse fortresses when attacking at full range. Basically, Norse, Norse fortresses were attacking at full range. But once you got the burning pitch upgrade, it would, for some reason, lower the maximum range. I guess it would be like new attack. So all of a sudden, Norse fortresses could not attack when using the burning pitch. However, if you were attacking buildings where the burning pitch is not applied, it would still use the increased maximum range. So now, even if you get the burning pitch, Norse fortresses should be attacking with full range so yeah it should be fixed now okay art updates reduce the file size of many texture files to reduce the total amount of used up memory we are hoping this will be helpful towards fixing the widescreen bug so let us know if it helps and I'll be honest I don't remember when was the last time I saw the widescreen well it might be because I <laughs> wasn't playing that often lately so I hope you haven't seen the white screen that much lately so yeah for me it's like I haven't seen it for a while so if you're lucky yeah maybe that was it okay so champion modes nothing okay other updates other the find Norse Raven hotkey you can find this hotkey under the find unit hotkey section so yeah, adding some fine hotkeys into the options. This time it's gonna be this time it was the Norse Raven. It can be useful. Depends how often you use the Norse Raven. I guess this is mainly for PvP. PvE you probably don't get it much. And yeah, made some adjustments to the debug log code. Yeah, so that was the June the 5th. Let's move on. June the 13th. Yeah, Sparta. New season. So if you're a PvP player, that's for you. You have new map pool. These are your maps. But bug fixes. Fixed an issue where quests that were supposed to be played in champion mode did not correctly load the right data and stats. I guess that could happen. Champion mode. <laughs> In quests kind of was a little bit messed up to be honest most, most likely you would end up like playing against AI with the same gear as you had so <laughs> and it's supposed to be like you have no gear no advisors at all so I don't know if it's been fixed properly but it might be Fixed an issue where the Roman entities incorrectly had 53 line of sight baseline as opposed to the intended for the entities champion adjusted to grant this back. Yeah, entities I guess would see too far for no reason. So I guess yeah, they don't have that good eyes. Remember that. <laughs> Fixed an issue where the quest Assault in Colophon and its elite variant would fail its option objective even if players didn't train ranged units. I heard about this, didn't play Colophon so I cannot say if, if it was actually happening or not, but I heard it was. I guess that's fixed now. Okay, Roman campaign, nothing, quest updates. And this one is big. Sparta training mode quests now available. Quest 1 Fast H2, Quest 2 Fast Barracks into Town Center, Quest 3 Fast H3 reach 160 population. You can find these quests in the Sparta PvP region, speak to the Sparta Captain, Quest Giver to access them. These quests are infinitely repeatable and are played in champion mode where level, gear, advices and milestones do not matter. 
They are meant to help you prepare for playing champion mode PvP, which is also available in the Sparta region. So yeah, luckily I am here in Sparta, so I can show it to you. You go here to this right quest giver in front of the arena. You have where you would get the Bronze Age, Silver Age, Golden Age challenges. Now you also have these three new quests: doubling down, which would be the Fast Age two. The brute squad, which is like H2 with some units, and boom or bust, which is reach population and H3. Now, one nice thing about this first of all, you can play them infinitely because they are repeatable, so there's no cooldown between them. So, once you finish, let's say, boom or bust, one time you can take it again and do it again. And try to improve yourself. Now, one nice thing about this is you actually earn Sparta points for this. So, if you want some Sparta points, hey, these quests are here for you, and you don't actually have to play PvP. Although, PvP is much faster at earning Sparta points. And if you don't know oh, what to do with the Sparta points, well, just go to this store and get some vanity here. <laughs> you can grab finally some of the Hades. Spartan and Gallic vanities. And if you want to see how what they look like, you have the showcases here. Right there. Okay. So that would be the Sparta, yeah, and they are played in champion mode, so it does not, not matter what advisors or milestones you're using, you will not end, have any of that. It's just base unit and no gear. Yeah, no gear. It might be a little bit challenging for newer players, but once you get the hang of it and think about it, what you should do in those quests, yeah, it's not that hard. You can do that. Art updates. Updated the background image of the Roman military tech tree to be more consistent with other civilizations. Credit to Hans and Raider for their beautiful work. Yeah, so before it was like, it was the, and it's the officer unit, Primus Pilus, in the background, now it's a legionary, and I'll be honest, that, the new background image actually reminds, that soldier reminds me of some other game, and oh boy. I don't know what to think of it, if I like, whether I like it because of how it looks <laughs> or what <laughs> yeah it, it looks nice it looks nice not gonna complain champion mode changes nothing okay UI updates age icons on the party UI have been brought back I don't care really other updates other new hotkeys select or spearman select all land military this one is all military units not your scouts or any priest units uh, a note here, this is particularly useful for Egyptian players that don't want to pull their priestesses of Ra off of their town center. Makes sense. And uh, find these hotkeys under the find unit subsection. And uh, new find priest unit hotkey group. So, yeah, Greek priest, Egyptian, blah blah blah. These hotkeys will cycle through each available priest unit one by one, particularly useful for efficiently spreading priest converts on high value targets. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, if you want to micro your priest, this might be a good way for you. Like, if you're going for some mass priest army, then you can definitely do this put the hotkey on something close to you and just press it. So Right click the target and keep switching between those priests and spread the conversion focus. Yeah, I think this is very useful. If you wanna if you wanna uh bind those hotkeys, yeah, then go ahead do it and this can be very useful. Definitely the fine priest unit is definitely gonna be very useful. I'm not using it because I'm not going for priest that much, so I don't really care about it. But 
I can definitely see it being very useful. And improve the display trade view, preview hotkey for markets. Uh oh yeah, I, yeah there was some some blog about the markets how they actually work. I'll make some other video about it. Okay, and now finally we're going to the for the July the third, which was a few days back. Okay, bug fixes. Fix the issue when several items with maximum range and critical hit chance effects had their stats incorrectly changed in the previous patch. Yeah, for some reason it was showing wrong number. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Fix an issue with the Celtic Bartholes hotkeys where the display tag didn't match the upgrades researched by the hotkey. Yeah, so issue with the hotkey. Fix an issue with the Celtic Town Centers where the hotkey for reaching the Silver Age didn't work properly. Again, the hotkeys. Fix an issue with the Roman market where the hotkey for reducing exchange rates incorrectly researched the tribute penalty upgrades instead. Yeah, different upgrades. Fixed a tree's location in the city of Rome region. I don't know what tree that was, <laughs> and I'm not gonna look for it. I don't really care. Okay, Roman campaign quest updates. Uh, rename to Spartan lesson to better indicate their purpose. Uh, okay, I don't see that anywhere, but okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. UI updates added a PvP code of conduct page to the Sparta, Sparta UI. Okay, we can go back in there. I believe it's right here. So, there's the code of conduct. If you want to read it, it's for you. Play, play fair, play for fun. Yeah, sure. That's what I do against the AI, always. Don't use multiple accounts. Obviously, don't play arranged matches. Obviously. How do I report? Yeah, if you want to read it, it's right here. Just go to Sparta, click the Sparta Arena, click this, rules, and this will show up. Okay, and moving on. Other updates. New exclusive legendary gear now available in Moes Mysterium. Tunic of Turin, Plutus. Blessed War Shield Quiras of Ashoka, Roman Concrete Walls, Jupiter's Lightning Arrows, Roman Toga. The following items are now available once again, but only in Moe's Mysterium. Divine Torque, Theos Exalted Xyphos, Lucon's Lucky Leather Armor, Artificer's Iron Plating, Nice Blessed Javelin, Amunet's Rest of Foresight. More details can be found in the development blog. Added several additional loading screen tips. Romans and children range attack, Babylonian garden cost, increase conservation explanation, etc. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get to the more changes soon enough. I'll show you the block. This is the biggest part of this video. Uh, yeah, so these I don't I don't know if I've seen those yet. Just so you know, the Centurion range attack is an ability which happens only once in a time. So if you feel like there is a tip saying information wrong that the Persian Immortal is the only unit con having both ranged and melee attack while having also the Centurion, remember Centurion has it as an ability which happens only once in a few seconds, whereas Immortal can always use the ranged attack. So, don't get it confused with that. Immortal is still the only unit having both melee and range attack. Well, you might argue with siege towers, but you have to load the siege towers. <laughs> and you cannot attack all units with the melee attack. Babylonian Garden Coast increase. Well, that's pretty simple. When you build a Garden, the next one costs more resources, and this cost increase is actually absolute value. So, if you have cost discount gear on your gardens or using advisors, whatever, if you have discounts on your gardens, it does not apply to the next one, it will always get increased. I think it's 10 wooden gold per garden, so 
if your garden costs let's say 40 40 the next one will cost 50 50 and if you would apply the discount which would be like lowering it down to 35 35 then the next one would cost 45 45 because the cost increase is absolute that's how it works conservation expansion i made a video about the villager stats so you might want to check check out that video where i explain how the conservation actually works and i think i said it multiple times somewhere else as well so <laughs> yeah i i suggest watching the villager stats video okay made adjustments to source legendary chest drop rate so they drop advisors and recipes less often this decrease in advice and recipe drop rate has been compensated by increasing the drop rate of gear i'll be honest it kind of made me angry that i'm getting so many advisors and not that many pieces of gear <laughs> to be honest it, it was pretty damn annoying so i'm kind of happy about this change to be honest less advisors but you get the advisor once and you use it, so you have it forever. So I don't really care about lowering the drop rate of advisors and recipes. The same thing, you get it once, and you literally get it just one, just once, and you have it forever. Doesn't matter where, you just need one recipe. Okay, overhaul the region of Athens be on par with other regions quality thanks to Coolblade for his fantastic work and again we can check this out and I will well, not in the Athens yet so we can definitely take a look okay come on load it there we go yeah it definitely looks different oh my gosh definitely looks different just take a look at this, oh my gosh. I actually see this for the first time because I wasn't in the Athens for a while. Okay, so we got the hopeless right here. With the quest. What do we have here? We have like hopeless and priest. <laughs> this is actually pretty good. A <laughs> fantastic. Training villagers to throw a javelin. This is actually well made. This actually looks really good. <laughs> I like it. Okay, what do we have here? Some dog. Why is there a dog? Whatever. Okay, we got some navy. We got some of these trireams from the Troy campaign. Okay, what do we have here? So we got this guy, messenger of Aris Tagoras. Okay, so he's now here, it's not like standing by the, the Parthenon. Yeah, Parthenon. Uh, that he would fall off. This actually looks very nice, not gonna lie. Ooh, this, this actually looks really good. It's like a wall that the units can stand on with ballista on it. Oh I like it, I like it. We got some sheep here. I don't like this. Sleepy spearman. I was like what what is that? It... I don't like these sheep. What is this? A sheep sacrifice I guess. Of a villager. Move on. So, I like the fortifications, not gonna lie. This bridge wall, water crossing. Okay, there's the port. So, the port master was definitely moved because if I'm not mistaken, he was like down here before. Now he's way up here. Let's make it happen. Don't miss Okay, this. what about the dogs? Ooh. I like the watch post here. There's some small camp. Okay, villagers having party there, whatever. 
a donkey. Like the the ship at the port. I like it. They they seem like to be parked in there really nicely. I like this, I like this. I just wonder if it was more realistic, how would this ship get out of here? That's what I'm thinking <laughs> right now. Still, it looks very nice. It looks very nice. I like it. Interesting. I'm interested at this, like... What is this? Wall? You can stand on? Interesting. Something similar over here. Okay, and definitely Socrates that move from here, from the edge. Now it's totally visible on the minimap, not like before. So we got him right here, and it seems we got some farmlands right here. Really nice. I like it. Is that a bear? Okay. Anything else? I think that's pretty much all. I think... I think people got deleted or he might be hiding somewhere. I don't know. I don't... I haven't seen him. This looks like some kind of weird wedding. Don't know why. Yeah, I... I don't know what to think exactly about this. It looks nice. It looks nice. Okay. Let's move on. And where would where were we? Okay, the drop rates, the Athens. Gave priority to villagers over ox cards in the unit selection panels so that whenever you select both villagers and ox cards in the same selection group villagers will always be highlighted. Yeah, this one is actually pretty simple to explain. Pretty much, when you select villagers and ox cards as Babylonians, or maybe you have converted the ox cards, I don't care, the ox card would always get highlighted, which was kind of annoying because you typically want to work with the villagers and you want to order them to build something. And the ox card would move with them. Yeah, so you would select them. The issue would be that the ox card. Uh, the ox cards were the units that were highlighted in the in the panel, yeah. So for you to actually order them to build something, you would have to highlight the villagers. Uh, yes, so you would have to click on it or press the top key on your keyboard, or whatever you would do. And then you would order them to build something. So now, yeah, you don't have to do that. Pretty nice quality of life change. I like that. Okay, now let's go to the <coughs> the developer block. So yeah, what do we got? So Morris, Restorium Rework, Small Loot Table Adjustments, Athens Region. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so we already I already walked through four of these pretty much, and what's coming? Yeah. yeah. So Moes Mysterium reworked. Pretty much Moes Mysterium now has exclusive legendary gear, and we have the classic gear that was removed some time back, and I was mentioning it, I believe, in my last. Uh, patch review video which was the whole May patch review yeah so yeah these items they were in the game they were removed now they're back they're exclusive items in Moe in Moe's Mysterium so yeah Divine Torque Artificer Theas Leucons and Amulets yeah, I'll be honest, you don't really need that many of these items. You need like two Divine Torques for the Celtic Ranged units. You need 
one needs for your Egyptian scout. Theas, yeah, that, that one goes for your all of your scouts pretty much. Unless you don't really want it. Yeah, 11% line of sight is not really that huge, so you can kind of you can kind of ignore it and go with something else. Let's say movement speed sort. That might be also a good option. So if you don't really want Theas, then you don't have to. Artificers is really nice because it is the highest movement speed you can get. So putting it on your fishing boats, your merchant transports, this is the best one you can get, in my opinion. Leucon, again, this is a scout item, so scouts with the light armor, this is your choice. Amunet is scouts with pop armor, so only Norse scouts. So you don't really need that many of these items, maybe only the artificers iron plating. If you had these items before they were removed, then you still have them, yeah, you, you keep them. But the thing is that those items actually have different icons from these. So don't get, get confused by it. These new exclusive versions have actually this blue coloring. And if you have the previous versions, they won't have these blue colorings. So <laughs> don't, don't get confused, it's just some kind of uh, difference between those. So you can tell whether you got it before or after this change. And now we got the new items. So Tunic of Turin, movement speed 5.9%, Pierce Armor 5.9%. So this is a legendary version of, I think it's called Double Stitch Kitten, which would be a level 10 rare pop armor, which would give you the highest movement speed in the whole game. So now you have better version of it, a legendary version. And yeah, it's definitely stronger. So if you want to put something on your caravans, you want the highest speed, this is your choice. This is the highest movement speed you can get. If you want something more safer, then Robes of Madness are still a great choice. They offer you movement speed as well as really good health. Yeah, this one definitely goes on caravans. I can't think of anything else that would want to use this in my, in my honest opinion. I can't I don't really want to use it on my caravans because, <laughs> like, yeah, it offers the best movement speed, but it still makes them pretty vulnerable. And I kind of prefer the ropes of Babylon on my caravans right now. So I'm not really worried about this one. Uh, moving on, the second item Roman Concrete Walls. Health 75.4%, build time. 19.5%. Those are average values, okay? So those values can be better or worse when you get these. And this one, yeah, that's a lot of build time saved. So I, I don't really care about the health. I think the build time is the biggest selling feature of this item. My issue with this is where would I actually want to put this? Because I still think the walls of the architect make more sense because you want to make your buildings cheap for the early game. The build time is not that useful early game because you still need to pay for the buildings and yes once you have the resources you can build it faster but then it might create some idle time for your villagers because you will not be able to get enough resources for the next one so they will be like sitting sitting there doing nothing for like a few seconds which is kind of bad but late game once you have enough resources yeah you will be able to build up your base the four bases pretty fast so once you have the resources it's really good so for me because i like the cheap buildings i think the walls of the architect are still better choice for most of your buildings but if I had to say where to use this, I would say the Babylonian Gardens are one thing that came to my mind because the discount does not really help them. 
like I said, the cost increase is absolute, so having discounts that will do anything for you. So the build time there is definitely a great choice. Uh, <laughs> get, getting those gardens up as soon as possible is very good because you get the, the food out of them sooner. You also get the reduced training time for your unit sooner. It's I think it's a very good choice there. Yeah. Other options that I would think of, it could be some tech buildings like let's say Greek Academy, the Celtic Bart Hall and stuff like that because you don't really build that many of those and you just want to get them as soon as possible. Those might be good options as well, you don't really have to rush them early. So yeah, I, you just build them up as soon as possible. I think those might be good option. It might be a good option there, as well as armories. You cannot forget about the armories. Yeah, stuff like that. That might be useful there. And last option that I thought of would be the Norse military buildings. And the reason is very simple because you can use your infantry units to build those buildings. And Norse infantry built at the half speed of a gearless villager. Once you have the gear, let's say you have the Hammer of Kaveh, it would be, would be like 40%, maybe even less. So yeah, Norse infantry builds pretty slowly those buildings. So putting it on the military buildings can save you a lot of time. And barracks, let's say barracks, they take 50 seconds without gear. So putting this on barracks can save you 10 seconds, but because Norse infantry builds twice as long, it can turn out to be actually 20 seconds saved if you let only one unit build it. Obviously the more units put there, the faster it's going to be get built. Yeah, so that's where I would kind of say what I would want to put it. And I'll be honest, I want to get one only for the gardens. But it, I told you my ideas where I would use it. I, th I think it can work in those cases. I, I would love to see someone use it on the Norse military buildings. I think that's where this can shine really nicely. Also, wonders. Yeah, I forgot. There are also wonders, and those take a while to build. But I would argue you can just put so many villages on the wonders that 20% is not gonna be make that much difference to be honest but if you want to build those wonders as soon as possible which can be useful in one roman legendary quest that i don't really like because it's forcing me to build the wonder as soon as possible i think it can work there so wonders in in those certain quests where you have to build the wonder as soon as possible, that's where I would probably also suggest using this. Okay, let's move on. Third item, and this one is my favorite. Pluto's Blessed War Shield. Health 8.5%, damage 2.5%, Gears Armor 14.1%. So finally it came, the legendary Ajax War Shield, and I'm happy about it. And yeah, I, lo I love this shield, I think, I, I was seriously missing a legendary shield that would give me Pierce Armor, like I kept wondering why is there no legendary shield giving me Pierce Armor, why is there no level 40 epic shield giving me Pierce Armor? But there was a rare shield giving Pierce Summer, but I don't, I didn't really want that one. I wanted Ajax because it, I think Ajax even has better stats than the rare shield. So with this, yeah, some very powerful shield entered the game. And I'll be honest, I like using this shield. And if you want to use it, I highly recommend some of your weaker units, 
let's say units like Greek Hippospists, I would say Roman Legionaries can be really good, stuff like that. I, I would highly suggest infantry units because those are the most vulnerable towards Pierce damage and Pierce armor is really worth getting because pretty much in any quest you see Pierce damage. Whether it's from the towers, whether it's from town centers, fortresses, or the enemy ranged units, there's a lot of Pierce damage sources. So Pierce armor is really worth in my opinion. And most likely it's gonna be useful in <laughs> I would say almost 100% quests. So yeah, this is my most favorite shield right now. Uh, if you want to use it somewhere else, you can. But remember, this shield is very defensive. So if you want some offensive shield, yeah, there's the shield of Rostam, I think it's called. With the high damage and crit. Uh, yeah, very defensive shield. So you're going for some defense. I think this one might be one of the best shields. And Jupiter's Lightning Arrows. So damage and movement speed 2.6%. This one is mainly about the movement speed. Damage is kind of meh. Don't use this for the damage. Use this for the movement speed. And yeah, this one I would say fishing boats. I would say. Mer merchant transports and that's about it this any other unit i would say either it's a defensive structure then i'm asking why would you need movement speed on a defensive structure and for the ranged units it's just the damage is not that much and the movement speed for them is not gonna do that much i think fishing boats and merchant transports that's the only answer for this one so you might want to get a few of those if you like it. Definitely useful on those here. Uh, fifth one, okay. Kuras of Ashoka. Damage 21.6%. Melee infantry armor 20.3. Melee cavalry armor 20.3. Pierce armor 13.7. So yeah, this Kuras is mainly about the damage, so if I want to use this, I would use it on a unit that has some range. And yeah, medium, since it's medium armor, the only units that come to my mind are like infantry units. Obviously, I'm not going to put it on my infantry units. That does not make sense. That would make them too vulnerable. It's better to just grab the breastplate of Alexander. For other units it would be like Barbie Order and the Gothic Battering Ram. Yeah, not putting it there either. So it's gonna end with Scorpios and the uh, throwers. But it's stone or block thrower. And I'll be honest, I don't really care about this one. Like I agree that this one offers the highest damage. So it might be if you are going for maximum damage thrower or scorpio then i guess this is your option but if you want to play it more safely then i would rather suggest the breastplate of alexander for the damage and for the throwers i would still rather suggest the fierce breastplate i think it's better to put some range on them yeah, but for the damage, I would rather go with Alexander than this one, to be honest. So I don't really care about this one. But if you want to use it, like I said, Throwers, Scorpios, I think that's the choice. And the last one, Roman Toga. Health, 62.9%. Melee Infantry Armor, 13.4%. Gathering Wood, 8%. So yeah, this one is... Uh, cloth armor that would be similar to the tunic of the collector, I think it's called. The legendary cloth armor that gives you food gathering. So this one is the same, but it's on wood, and instead of bonus damage protection, you get infantry armor. So yeah, if you want want a lot of wood, this is your cloth armor. 
so it's an alternative if you don't really care about food and want the wood yeah this is your choice it makes a lot of sense whether you want want it on this village or this village i'll leave it up to you but yeah definitely on villagers so you don't really need them many pieces of this and i'll leave it up to you if you want the wood yeah this is your crop farmer definitely and now the buying chest from Moes does not guarantee obtaining one of these items. You can find more information about this in the store UI when selecting Moes Mistorium. And we'll get to that. Okay, small loot table adjustments, that's the reducing drop rate of advisors and recipes, the items region rework. We saw that. The quest give locations. Yeah, it looks completely different. You can see that, right? Okay, PvP. So we got the rules. And yeah, the new thing, the feature that that's gonna come hopefully soon. And that's the advisor loadouts. I'm not gonna read through it pretty much. You'll have like five sets of advisors or advisor loadouts. And if you're going for a quest, you want to use this loadout, then you will set like the number you want to use. So you set this, let's say you're playing as Greek, so you set this one for, let's say, Hippa Space plus Ballista. So you will have Isamenos plus, uh, what's his name? Uh, Aristocles, is it? I don't remember the name, the legendary advisor for a ballista. Yeah, so you would set it, you would set like Irene, Todd, something like that. Then you would want for naval battle, so you will set Horus H2, I don't know, Amon H3 and Trifon H4. And so on and so on. So yeah, and then if you want to just select it, you just click the number. And you will get the advisor. So definitely it's gonna save a lot of clicking, especially in H2, because there's way too many advisors in H2. And I think there's a lot of them in H3 as well. So saving a lot of clicking there definitely gonna be useful. And yeah, some update on the Indian Indian civilization. Yeah, yeah, it's being worked on. There's not much, but we can enjoy. Ashoka right here and I like this small detail where he's like holding his sword and he like torn apart piece of his clothing I like this piece of, this piece of detail yeah very interesting okay and I'm gonna head into my hometown and I'll show you what the mower looks like and I'm gonna warn you I'm gonna warn you about something. Okay, so you go to Moes Mistorium. If you don't have it like this, then you will probably have it like this. You will have this arrow right here. So you click on it. You want to close it. Here's the arrow. And here you can see it. You have the previous stuff, pretty much lucky chest, chest 5 through 40. Each Chest going up by 5 levels, so 5, 10, 15, blah blah blah, 40. So nothing changed. So pretty much this is the same as before. If you don't know about where Moes Mistorium is actually a place where you would get lower level chest and you would try to get some lower level gear that would be better than some or would actually offer something that level 40 gear does not offer. So if you wanted the double stage, you would have to purchase, I think level 10 is where you would get it. So you would purchase level 10 and hope for getting the item. So now, yeah, pretty much it's still the same. Now, however, you get the chance to get the legendary items. And you can see, so exclusive gear, try your luck at getting one of these items. And we can see that... We have only in level 10 chest the tunic of Turin and divine torque. Level 15 we get the shield, we get the exalted cyphos. Level 20, level 25, 
pretty pretty fun so pretty much if I want to get let's say the tunic of Turin I purchase the level 10 chest for a chance to get the item and yeah I'm gonna warn you the drop rate is goddamn low not gonna lie I was going for the shields Luckily, I, I got two. Uh, I'm gonna show it to you. I got it right here on my hippos pistol. Right here. And it took me like 200,000 coins to get the first one, and then another 800,000 to get the second one. So, if you're going for these items, make sure you have a lot of coins. And I'm telling you, a lot of coins. You might not even get lucky like I did. Like getting two, two shields in one million coins, it might have been lucky. You might not even get that lucky. You might spend two millions and still not see an item. The drop rate is very, very low. So if you're a new player who just started playing and has like 100,000 coins, don't try to get these items. These items are going to cost a lot of more coins than you can imagine. It's a tough battle of luck for you to get one of these items. And it's gonna cost you a lot of coins. And like I said, I spent like 1 million to get two of these. And take a look at the cost of these chests. These level 15. 150 each. I spent 1 million on these. Just imagine how many chests I opened. And I'm not including the coins I got back from vendoring the items I got. Not to mention all the coin sacks I had. Especially those big epic ones. Oh my god. If I had to say, I think it was even 50% more. If not double the amount. So yeah, if you're going for these items, make sure you have a lot of coins. So preferably win the, lo the Baham's lottery. And then just start spending and make sure you have a lot of time. You might want to want to find some video or movie to watch while opening those chests, because it's gonna take a while to find one of these items. And it was just the shield. If I went for the other items, like let's say I wanted the Roman concrete wall, that cost me even more. So I, if I wanted the Roman, Roman wall, I'll be opening a lot less chests than I would if I wanted the shield. So yeah, like I said, I'm warning you, make sure you have a lot of coins and make sure you have enough time to open those because it might take a long time and it, oh boy, it took me hours to open all of those, like 2-3 hours, and maybe even longer. It's not gonna be too soon, and you might not even get lucky enough to get one of those. And you might get lucky to get the legendary item, but it might be the other one, which will, you might not want. And we can take a look. I have the Zypho site here for my scout. Where's the scout? Here's the scout. See? The Exalted Zyphos, the old one, is actually fully black. But the new one is like golden with some blue and then the black. As you can see I have definitely different version of that item. So yeah, I think that's all for me for now. I don't think there was anything else here. I'm definitely looking forward to the advisor loadout. I like the changes to the Sparta. If you want some vanity, yeah, go go do some of those spot training quests. If you don't want to really play the PvP, yeah, you can just do those quests. But it's gonna be slow. And you better practice because if you can beat it in time, you get double the amount of Spartan points for that. And yeah, I don't think there's anything else, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please press the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. 
And yeah, tell me in the comments what you think about these changes. Especially the Moe. And yeah, I hope you'll get lucky to get the Moe. But before you start doing Moe, make sure you have enough coins. Don't spend everything on Moe. Trust me. It's not gonna be worth. It's better to just get some other items or some weaker versions of these items. It's definitely gonna be easier to get some of those. Like let's say you want the tunic of two, yeah, it might be easier to get the double stitched. So you might wanna stick with that. Okay, that's all from me for now. Like I said, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!